Welcome back. As promised, I'm joined now by Jennifer Eakins, our Denver Broncos correspondent, who um, has been on the show a lot. I'm very fortunate to be able to get her back on before the end of the year. Big game last night, even bigger news. Um, concerning Peyton Manning. We'll talk about that in a minute. First of all, let's talk about the game last night. Jennifer, thanks again for joining me. Well, hello. Thanks for having me, as usual. Well, uh, you know, we've talked about Brock Osweiler before, and um, it was looking a little bit uh, – it wasn't looking very good there for a while for Brock the Hunk and, and the Denver Broncos offense. Uh, they definitely made adjustments in the second half. I think that that was probably the key to them winning was the fact that they made adjustments where the Bengals did not. But it was a really great game. It went down to the win into overtime. And Mm -hmm. uh, so give us your thoughts on that, and then we'll talk a little bit about the defense and how it's kind of faded, you know, down the stretch and what what concerns you might have about it. You know, it's interesting that the first – you know, so obviously, as we all know, the last few games were kind of the opposite effect. They started out guns blazing mm-hmm. and just completely faded. I mean, they hadn't scored a point in the second half in, like, eight quarters or something. I mean, not, I'm sorry, in, in, like, eight quarters. You know, it, it was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the, when the game starts out and, and obviously the Bengals are driving, I mean, McCarron looked like he was, you know, Tom Brady yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was it was kind of comparison. yeah, and it was like what is going on? And you know, mm-hmm. obviously, I follow you know a lot of Broncos people. It's my, my whole timeline, and everyone was in full panic mode. And for some reason, I was a little bit calm, and I, I was actually just surprised at how people were so quick to just write off the whole thing. I mean, everyone was just ripping apart Wade Phillips and ripping mm-hmm. apart, you know, <laughs> the, the way the defense was playing. And, yeah, they weren't playing well, but it, I don't know. I just, for some reason, I had this weird feeling that it just wasn't, I don't know, you know. And, and obviously the offense, we're kind of used to them, you know, stalling out at this point. I mean, it's been, that's kind of been their M.O. So it mm-hmm. was really, it was really, really nice to see them actually make adjustments in the second half because the last, Three games they they hadn't at all, you know, and so you know well, it was they, interesting. If they hadn't have made them, they were going to lose that football game. Oh, for sure. And I think one of the key things they did is is they switched from man to man to zone, you know, and you can mm-hmm. tell it was a huge mm-hmm. difference. And the defense finally came alive in the second half. I mean, they you know, McCarron that they really couldn't do anything. I mean, their run game. You know, much to my dismay, because I actually needed Jeremy Hill to get me some more points for my fantasy championship, um, but that did not happen. You know, they shut down the run game, and, and they looked like the number one defense that they had been, you know, this season in the second half. You know, the adjustments they made on offense, um, you know, I don't know exactly what they were, but they, they obviously, you know, made a huge difference. I mean, Brock, the fact that he got out there, not only did he lead – you know, what would have been the game-winning drive had McManus made that field goal, yeah. you know. He, we'll he talk actually, about that, too. We'll yeah. talk about that. <laughs> you know, he actually was able to do it again in overtime, mm-hmm. you know, and that's really impressive for a young guy like that that just doesn't have that kind of experience. And the Bengals' defense is good. I mean, they are a good defense. Yes, you know? they are. Yes. And yes. so to be able to lead, you know, technically two game-winning drives, um, you know, in the second half like that was, was amazing. And, you know, not to, I mean, it was actually really cold. <laughs> you know, no one really talked about the weather too much because it was dry, but it was mm-hmm. freezing. It was like 12 degrees out there. And, you know, I was really mm-hmm. impressed with, you know, his yeah. poise and, and his way to kind of put all the crap of the first half behind him. He does you know. not get rattled. He does not. And then that is a trait that you want in your quarterback. Yeah, and he went down, you know, unfortunately a lot in the first half again, you know. And, I, like, everyone mm-hmm. compares, like, like a baby giraffe, you know. He, he's, <laughs> getting, he's getting knocked down. And he almost looked hurt, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. And, and mm-hmm. his, no, his non-throwing elbow, he had some issues with that, it looked like, at one point. And, you know, it was a really, really impressive win, you know. For it that was. Team. It was. I mean, what you know, what it says going forward, who knows? I mean, I still don't know what you know this team is. You know, it's like from week to week, you just don't know. But I will say the wins that they've that they've managed to put together this season have actually been impressive. I mean, they've they lost, really have. Mm-hmm. They've lost to some crappy teams, but mm-hmm. somehow, you know, they. Um, I'm sorry, um, Fl- uh, Fletcher. I'm sorry, I'm totally being unprofessional right now, but my cat is about Fletcher. <laughs> Hey, okay. Twizzler's about to eat that. 
Okay, I'm so sorry. Our chat is on the table about to eat my son's breakfast, and he's in the other room. We're, uh, okay. we're, we're cat people here. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Do your, cats yeah. get, do your cats get on the table and knock over beverages? Because that's what oh ours Oh, my does. God. And yes. he, was about to, he was about to knock over an entire glass of milk, and I just wasn't having it. My, um, but cats, anyway. my, oh, cats, just, my cats just broke uh, the third of my four set, four glass set, wine glass, Christmas wine okay. glass. Okay. I'm so upset about it. <laughs> I know. It's awful. But back to, back to the task at hand. What I was going to say is it's interesting because they've lost a few really, like, games they shouldn't mm-hmm. have lost. But, yeah, and they, they beat, like, I can't remember the exact number, but they've beaten, like, four or five, ten-plus win teams. I mean, they beat mm-hmm. Green Bay. They beat, you know, so it's like, what is this team? So it'll be interesting to kind of to see. Um, it was a great win. I mean, it really, really was. I know that um, – you know, a lot of people were down in the first half, and it's like, okay, mm-hmm. here we go. People were, like, already on the next year mm-hmm. thinking, you know, and, and it's exciting. I mean, they, they clinched mm-hmm. a playoff berth, and, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I want to go back to something that you said. Well, there's a couple of things that you said. Um, you know, people want to talk about that Raiders loss, but the Raiders are a pretty good football team this year, and they're, I think, poised to make um, a big leap, you know, and in, 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 we'll have to see what they're – situation is, do they move to L.A. and all of that, but they're a pretty darn good you know, young football team. No, they are. I, I think the, Ra- the Raiders definitely have a talented roster for sure. It was just frustrating because they, they just dominated the first half, you know, yeah. and then to, come, yeah. to come back and just, you know, do absolutely mm-hmm. nothing and give it all up to, to a loss, mm-hmm. I think it's frustrating. But, yes, they are definitely a talented team. I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider that, you know, that... You know, it's just it's frustrating to be able to. They went into the black hole earlier this season and won, and then to lose at home right. against that same team when they were up by so much. It, you know, that that was I think more the frustration part rather than saying that they were a bad team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Was yeah, yeah. And it was a bad loss because wasn't that was that their first loss or second? No, they lost to um, who was the first loss? I think it was the Colts, maybe. Okay. All right. Um, and then they lost to the Chiefs, yeah. and then, yeah. Ah, that's right, that's right. Uh, the second thing I wanted to touch upon in what you just said um, was the defense and switching from man to zone, which is not easy to do. Um, I'm not the biggest Wade Phillips fan, but I do think that he's a pretty darn good, you know, defensive coordinator. Talk about, tell, talk to us a little bit about how important Chris Harris is to that defense and how I mean, he just seems to fly under the radar. He's such a great, he's so great. He's such a great story. And that's, you know, one of the things that's great about him, you know, he was undrafted and, you mm-hmm. know, that's all it, he's just, and he's just such a good person. You know, he, he never, he's just never complained about being under the radar, you know, and he, he got to, mm-hmm. you know, think about it. He was, he got to learn from Champ Bailey, you know, mm-hmm. which is obviously evident in his play and the way mm-hmm. he conducts himself. He's just a good person. He's great with the community, you know, and he doesn't – he's just – you know, he's, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why he isn't in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, I know that, you know, he – I feel like he got a little bit more publicity, you know, this off season coming in. You know, he was ranked up there as one of the top corners going in. Mm-hmm. And he was – you know, I would say his name mentioned a little more in national, you know, media than usual, but mm-hmm. he's had a great season. I mean, in his, yeah. you know, and that was the thing last night, you know, he has, you know, every team and they have their little, you know, phrases and mantras or whatever. And right, his right. thing is, you know, and his little thing is no fly zone, right? So that's mm-hmm. his, right, like, right. Mm-hmm. And last night it was just the first half, he was just getting trash. And you and I had a Twitter conversation about it last night, how these people just trash everyone, mm-hmm. you know, on Twitter. And everyone was just like, I can't remember the exact what they were saying, but they're like, yeah, you know, no fly zone, my ass, blah, blah, blah. You know, right, and I was right. like, mm-hmm. come on, dude. He's entitled to a bad half, you know? Everybody's mm-hmm. entitled. He's, he's, you know, he's had, once again, a great season. The other he's, team gets paid, too. I mean, it's like... like Exactly. We expect so much from our cornerbacks. You saw, you see that conversation with Richard Sherman, Patrick Peterson, you know, Josh Norman. They let a guy, you know, make a, a a catch on them, and it's like, oh, that guy sucks. Well, you know, shut down corner of my ass and all of that stuff. And it's like, dude, you know, I mean, and 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 the Bengals' offense in the first half, you're right, was they they were rolling. Yeah, I mean, it's not like AJ Green is some you know chump. I mean, right. it's like you exactly. know. And, and Muhammad, last week, and Muhammad Sanu is a nice player too. 
Exactly. And, like, you know, last week, you know, against Antonio Brown, there were some issues, too, and people were, you know, and it's like, come on, people. I mean, it's everybody, you know, everybody's at a high level. Everybody's getting paid, like you said. And, you know, people are entitled to, you know, lose a couple, a couple, mm-hmm. you know, matchups here and there. But, you know, he's had a great season. And, you know, for somebody, you know, as we say, to, to, go, to go undrafted, you know, and then to end up at the top in his position is, is pretty, you know, it's pretty amazing. And the fact that he's, you know, he's humble and he's just a really good person. He's very quick to, you know, do any kind of media thing you want. And, you know, he's always available and he always has a smile on his face. He's just a good kid, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, and I think this was um, like toward the fumble recovery by DeMarcus Ware, uh, how important is having DeMarcus Ware back uh, for that football team, for that defense? It's pretty evident. You can tell. I mean, you just you need him out there. He's everywhere, you know. And and mm-hmm. um, you know, I think he's he's you know, I think he's a leader too. You know, as far mm-hmm. as emotional emotionally, I think it's great to have him out there. And you know, I will say Vaughn was kind of you know he wasn't really around that much last night, mm-hmm. which was surprising. Um, but he always seems to play better when when Ware is in there too for some reason. Um, I think Miller. I think he had a couple good plays last night, but he really didn't. He wasn't super impactful. Definitely not in the first half. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's you know I think having wear out there just it does something you know to the to the defense and and kind of um, I don't know if it grounds everyone in a certain way, but it's just nice to have them out there. You know, it definitely affects the team. Yeah, I think I, I, I agree with um, everything you said there actually. But he definitely is a leader, and you know he is a guy that kind of I don't want to say he sets the tone because there are a lot of good football players on that defense, but he does. Having him out there, to me, I don't watch them nearly as closely as you do, but from my perspective, he seems to elevate the play of everyone around him. Right. I would agree with that for sure. And, you know, like you said, there's a lot. I mean, that defense, there's a lot of good players, and they all kind of came together last night in the second half. I mean, Danny Trevathan made some good plays, Mm -hmm. and Brandon Herschel, and, you know, those guys are – they just all kind of, I don't know what, like I said, I don't know what happened, you know, at halftime, you know, in that locker room. But whatever it was, you know, both sides of the ball kind of elevated themselves and, you know, both. And, and special teams. I mean, they, you know, they made some good plays too, you know. Yeah. So it was um, an overall, you know, they, I don't know what, you know, they all just kind of came together for a really good team win in the end. Mm-hmm. Brock Osweiler, um it's hard to step into the shoes of a legend like Peyton Manning. We're going to talk about the latest news concerning him, but um, he's been, he's done for the most part, he's done exactly what the Broncos have needed him to do. I was looking at his numbers. Um, they're, you know, pretty similar to Peyton Manning numbers and, and superior to Peyton Manning in a lot of respects. The, the big difference is, the lack of the turnovers, the lack of the interceptions and, and all of that. And how important has that been? You know, it's been it's been really nice, you know, for him to kind of step in and, and kind of, um, you know, it's, there's no way he's going to fill the shoes as far as the the experience mm-hmm. and the intellect and all of that. that you know, that, that's going to take a lot of time. Um, but I think, you know, like you said, the turnovers, I, I haven't, I didn't look recently, but I've definitely seen, um, some tweets and articles that I believe Peyton Manning is still has the most interceptions. He in the league. And yeah. he hasn't played, he hasn't played, he hasn't played in, in, yeah, and he hasn't played in like five games. So yeah. it's, or six, I, I, you know, which that's kind of crazy. And we all know, I mean, Peyton just didn't, did not have a beginning, a good beginning to the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's nice to see Brock, you know, come in there, especially because, you know, as I told you before, we really didn't know what we were getting. I mean, yeah. nobody really knew. I mean, he really didn't have more than a you know a handful of NFL live snaps, you know, mm-hmm. before before starting earlier this season. So mm-hmm. it's kind of nice to see that he can go in that. Now, is he the future of this team? I, I don't know. You know, it's so tough. And yeah, you know, when you start out like like they did last night, you know, of course there were all those tweets. Everyone's like, oh, you know, and so it's uh-huh. like, eh. You know, it'll be interesting to kind of see what he does and, and how he progresses both, you know, mentally and physically, you know, into, you know, because he does, there's times he definitely holds on to the ball a little longer. Yes, yes, he than, does. But a young, player, a young player will do that. Right. I mean, he holds on much longer than Peyton, you know, will do. But on the flip side, he'll run for five yards, which Peyton yeah. would never do, you know. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and 
like like I said, he you know, and then he goes down like a like a baby giraffe. Which every time I hear that, it just makes me laugh because it just the image, you know. He's, so, <laughs> he's just so tall, and he just he's gets tall and lanky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, it is exciting to know that you know there's a lot of teams out there whose backup. I mean, it, you know, you, we and I have talked about this a million times. There's just there's a lack of talent at the quarterback position, you know, yeah. in the league. And to know that they, they kind of had him sitting there for five years and now he's out there, you know, I, I'm happy for him because whether, yeah. whether he ends up in Denver next year or somewhere else, he's going to get paid and he's going to get a job. Yeah. And, you know, that's, I'm, I'm happy for him because, you know, he put in his time for sure and he quietly put in his time. He never, yeah. you know, he hasn't said anything in, in four, you know, five mm -hmm. years. So, um, you know, I think it's, It'll be interesting, and as you know, with Peyton, it, it, you know that whole thing is going to be. I mean, aside from obviously the latest stuff with that, right. but um, as far as his play and whether he ends up on the field again, you know, yeah. whether it's this year or next, you know, that'll be interesting as well. Yeah. Uh, before we really talk about Peyton, I want want to mention something that that you just touched upon. I was kind of, I, I sort of laughed about it when I was looking at the stats. Brock Osweiler is third on the team in rushing yards. Now, it's not a lot. He's ran the ball 21 times for 51 yards, but still, yep. <laughs> that's kind of funny, right? It is. It is because, you know, as we all know, Peyton really, I mean, he won't even, you know, he wouldn't even run for the one yard that they need, you know. he just he, he, He's dead last with four carries for negative four yards. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> wow, that's really funny. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's nice to see that Brock, can actually get, you know, the mm -hmm. three yards if, if they need it. And, you yeah, know, right, he'll right. do it. You know, he'll yeah. touch that ball and, and he'll run, you know. And, um, you know, so that's, you know, that's promising because, you know, yeah. nowadays in the NFL you kind of have to be able to run, you know. It, yeah. You know, I mean, look at Cam and look at Russell mm -hmm. Wilson. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I mean, now we're not, I'm not comparing him to them as far as their, their, his wheels. But still, it's nice to see that he can get a few, you know, if he needs it. Yeah. Yeah, um, but he's a free agent at the end of the season. Have they had any contract talks with him, to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. I haven't seen anything about it. I think they're just kind of, uh, you know, trying to deal with the task at hand. I mean, they're, you know, yeah. there may be quiet, there may be private ones, but at least, you know, not to our knowledge, I haven't seen anything. Well, they sealed a playoff berth with the win last night in overtime. Um, before we talk about Peyton's the latest news, and I use these terms loosely, news report. Um, I, I want to ask you this. But I don't know that I've seen anything. Obviously, Peyton has been, um, you know, an influence to Brock Osweiler because, uh, you know, a, as, um, you know, the starter and Brock got to watch him and all of that. But since this latest, since his quote-unquote injury and brought taking over and doing so well. What is the word, what is the sense that you have? Is Peyton helping him? Is there still that relationship there? Or, you know, sometimes veteran guys just don't really want to groom the guy, don't want to help the guy that's going to take their job. You know, that's interesting because I, you, know, you see mixed things. It's like in the national news, they want to make it a story like, oh, Peyton's not helping, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But from people I know that are actually there, like at Dove Valley, and at, that he is. I mean, he's helping. He, you know, yeah. that, um, you know, he he definitely, I know he helped with the, you know, the halftime adjustments in that Patriots mm -hmm. game, you know, and I know that. You know, that I mean, Brock came out and said it, you know, after the mm -hmm. game. He's like, Peyton, no doubt, you know, at halftime helped us win that game by, you know, he saw, you know, you know. I mean, Peyton is probably the smartest, you know, brain out there, you know, in the NFL currently. And so yeah. he was able to see what needed to be done and told Brock. You know, I think people want to make, people want to make Peyton out to be, you know, this, you know, egocentric kind of just, mm -hmm. I don't know. And, you know, and maybe he is that guy. I mean, nobody really knows him. I mean, he's very, you know, he's very private and he's very closed off as far as the real him. So maybe he is that guy. But at the same time, I don't want to believe it. And I, and I would like to think, you know, he respects the game so much, you know. Yeah. He grew up, I mean, he is the NFL, you know, as far as, right, and right. I feel like he respects it so much that he would really want to do everything he could 
mm-hmm. to you know to have his team win. And I feel like he I feel like he is helping. And you know, people gave him so much crap because he was not out. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't travel with the team, and he was you know he wasn't on the sidelines when it was like mm-hmm. negative whatever degrees, and he was hurt. And it's just like you know, I I would like to think that he's helping him along, and I would like to think that they developed a legitimate you know friendship. I mean, it, it's been five years, or I guess four years. And, you know, it, it just, yeah, I mean, I would like to think that he was providing any insight he could, you know, to to secure a victory, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about Peyton, I, I want to ask you a little bit about the other quarterback, um, A.J. McCarron. We both are SEC gals. We watch a ton of SEC football. I hate Bama as much as the next SEC fan. But A.J. McCarron was a good college quarterback at Alabama and won a lot of football games. And, you know, and he's a very confident guy. I think that that has rubbed people, a lot of people, the wrong way. But, you know, he's not – he's actually, you know, showing that his chest or whatever you want to call it is, you know, helping him win games in the National Football League as well. Yeah, I, I have to say, you know, I was somewhat of a doubter on whether he – would, you know, translate, whether his skills were mm-hmm. translating. You know, mm-hmm. as we know, a lot of SEC quarterbacks are just not able to, you know, mm-hmm. translate to the NFL. And I was a little skeptical, and, I, you know, I was impressed. I, I definitely was impressed last night on just – he didn't seem like – you know, at least in the first half, you know, mm-hmm. he just wasn't – he wasn't really rattled. He had no problem throwing, you know, to Akeem Tlaib and Chris Harris aside. You know, he had no mm-hmm. – he wasn't scared of it. He, you know, he went for it, and I was definitely mm-hmm. impressed. You know, I think, I mean, I think he gets a lot of crap, A, for being an SEC quarterback, and then, you know, his whole the girlfriend, the Catherine Webb thing, you know, that all gets, you know, lumped in, and, and you know, people just, I don't know, they see him as kind of a, I don't even know the word as I'm thinking of, but, you know, I, I will say I, I was definitely impressed. I think he, you know, whether or not he's going to be like a future, you know, super stud in the NFL, I don't mm-hmm. know. But for being, you know, so green and, and young out there, he didn't seem to be scared or rattled, and that's yeah. a really good. That's a good sign, you know. People on Twitter were saying he was he's very Alex Smithish. Um, oh. I I might be one of the biggest Alex Smith defenders in the world, and I'm okay with that. You know, hey, look, the Chiefs are in the playoffs; they're hot right now. Um, Alex Smith has been balling out, and you know, Jamal Charles goes down, and they won what, like what, eleven straight? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, it's kind of crazy. So, um, I, I, you know, I, again, I hate Bama as much as the next person, but, yeah, you know, I kind of hope you know, A.J. McCarron does succeed. I think, um, you know, the kind of the hate on him has been a little bit uh, overboard. All right, so Peyton Manning, um, Al Jazeera, which is a, a credible news network, but doesn't mm-hmm. cover sports. In all fairness, um, that criticism has been warranted. It does not cover a, a ton of sports. To my knowledge, and to a lot of people's, I mean, I haven't seen anything. Um, but the the report from them, the documentary that uh, that was released, have you had a chance to watch it? I think it's like forty five minutes long, or what have you. You know, I actually have not watched it. I mean, I've read I've read several articles about it. I feel like I'm, you know, kind of up on it, but I haven't actually watched the documentary. I don't know if I, uh, yeah, no, I have not. Um, but yes, they are they are definitely a credible news source. I don't know why people out there are bashing, you know, they're they're calling them TMZ and stuff and they're not. I mean, they're they're a legit news source. Now, like yeah. you said, I mean, I don't know how how sports centric they've been in the past. Right, right. But no, I have not gotten a chance to see it. Okay. Well, um Charlie Sly is the the yeah. report is the reported quote unquote source. There's a lot of um uh, interesting information about him. He first he was um, saying that uh, Peyton Manning got HGH through his wife, and he was an intern at this establishment that um, has been the subject of this documentary. There were other players mentioned too. Everyone has uh, James Harrison to name one. Um, James Harrison has long been adamant that he does not you know, that's not his game. You know, he's a guy who um, is obviously physically fit and takes care of his body. I mean, he's still getting it done. You know, like DeMarcus Ware, old man football, has done pretty well this year. Um, Mm -hmm. The report is that Peyton Manning, through his wife, Ashley, I think is her name. Yeah. uh, 
received HD, took HGH. I think this was back when he was recovering from his neck surgery. To my knowledge, I don't think the NFL even tested for it then. Um, it's a, a very weak story on its surface. Help us make sense of it. What do you make of it? You know, well, it's interesting because, yes, it's a weak story to, be, to begin with. Then you have the Charlie Sly coming out and recanting his story. Yeah, saying, exactly. I never said that. Then you have the actual institute saying, well, this guy wasn't even there at that time. So this intern was an intern for three months in 2013, which has nothing to do with the 2011 time frame where they're claiming. I, you know, it's interesting. It's one of those things where when you first hear it, you're like, all right, sure. I mean, I, you know, I feel like at this point it, it's not really out of the realm that anybody would take HGH, you know. I mean, it, but at the same time, then you think about who it is and you're like, Peyton is just, I feel like if he if he was, you know, I just feel like he'd be much smarter than having it sent to his wife. Like that's mm -hmm. not really that's not really being very like thorough in your, you know what I mean? Like that seems pretty easily traceable. I mean, I feel like he would be much smarter than just sending it to his wife. Like that's mm -hmm. not really being so sly, you know? Right, but that's the, good. That's, thank you. Yeah, but that's the truth. I mean, really, he, you know, he's a smart guy. I mean, I'll send it to my wife. They'll never find out. You know, like really, you know. Um, and the thing is, is that you know, and then the wife, you know, now I just feel bad for Ashley because I feel like now she's getting dragged to the mud for whatever reason. And the truth of the matter is, they do use HGH for other things, and one of mm -hmm. them is fertility. You know, and she yeah. was, yeah. They, they, and they were, I believe, trying to have, you know, and she ended up having twins after that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it could be legit, but at the same time, with everything we've seen in the past in sports, I wouldn't be surprised either if it was true. You know what I mean? That, that's mm -hmm. kind of where I, where I sit. Um, I also feel like Peyton, I don't know. I mean, as I said earlier, he just loves the game, and he mm -hmm. loves the NFL so much. I just don't know that he would do that. Mm -hmm. You know, but then there's also a part of me that's like, all right, well, look at his numbers, you know, when mm -hmm. he first came when he first came back, you know, they were insane, you know, and now they're not all of a sudden, and you're like, well, so it's really, it's tough, but, you know, I feel like the guy, the Charlie Sly recanting his story, you know, and then now this mm -hmm. institute coming out and saying that he was an intern not even at the same time, it's like, eh, you know. It's a very I, odd story um, with it a is, lot of... Yeah, yeah and there's also, with. right, but the thing that's interesting is there was a ton of other people named in that. You got Clay Matthews and Julius Pepper. Like, nobody's talking about that right now. It's all Peyton Manning for some reason. But there were all these other pretty high-profile guys that were named in that report. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just, it seems kind of odd because, like we said, Al Jazeera is credible, so you feel like they had to at least have a few sources and, and done something before they ran this. But yet, you've got Charlie Slot, you know, and... And then I saw something last night where the Institute, you know, saying that he was, you know, Manning was accompanied by the, the Colts staff every time he went. He never, you know, and I don't know. It's just, I don't, you know, until I see some more actual information, you know, then I'm not really mm -hmm. buy, buying a whole lot of it right now. Well, um, putting all of that aside, HGH um, really is, has never been proven. Where it aids is in recovery. Right, and, right. And, and exactly, and, yeah, and um, of course, I it, it's kind of funny because I used to be like the most one of the most and you know, anti peds, anti all of this stuff. I did a complete reversal of that a few years ago, and I've written several times about, um, I you know, what I, I don't know why we care so much. Well, um, no, exactly. That was the first I, thing. My, my, yeah, my husband and I looked at each other like, do we even care if he did? No. Like, let's move I, on. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I understand more in baseball where it's really stat driven and and it's that you know it's it's a different game. But in football, I mean, you've got this violent sport where guys are you know crushing their body up against you know another guy or, you know, goal. I mean, they run into wall. You know, it, it's such a violent game. Why wouldn't we want them? Right. No, for sure. And you have somebody that's recovering from his fourth neck surgery, mm -hmm. you know. It's like, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, and the fact that they didn't, I mean, they start, I don't even know why they started, you know, testing for HGH. I mean, there's other, I think the anabolic steroids and things like that where they're just, 
that stuff I can see. But like HGH is just it's it's like you said, it's used to aid in healing. It's not mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't make you physically stronger than you can mm-hmm. you know, it's not like yeah, like the anabolic steroids where you're literally just taking stuff to make you bigger and stronger than mm-hmm. humanly humanly possible without. Mm-hmm. This this is just helping your body heal and Yeah. Yeah, I've never thought that they should have such a big issue with HGH. Now, I understand the 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 pads, you know, the steroids, and, and, right. and I understand that a little bit more. But even so, I mean, my position is, you know, pro, first of all, prohibition has never been shown to work. You know, anytime yeah. you try, and, and guys are out here, they're still doing it. You know, um, uh, they're there's always going to be that drive to find the next big thing that helps make you bigger, better, faster, stronger. And we want our players bigger, better, faster, stronger. I think that, and and, and it's literally a multi-billion dollar industry to, to, to try and eradicate it. My position is just regulate it. Right, and we know we we know from the past that the war on drugs doesn't work, you know, in no matter what capacity you're talking, it just doesn't. So I'm with you, I'm with you on that. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, it will be interesting to see. Peyton is probably never going to start another game for the Denver Broncos. Um, I think that it's kind of sad to watch him go out of the Broncos. This way, do you think that he'll ever play in the league again? Um, uh, you know, there's all this talk about. I would think not. I mean, I really, I, I, you know, there may be, you know, a, a team that takes a chance on him next year, and mm-hmm. he goes somewhere for a year. But I just don't. I don't even know what team that would be. I mean, I was. I don't either. To, mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody was talking. On, I can't remember who it was here locally the other day, and they were going through the scenarios and like. The only one they could come up with was, like, the Browns, I think. And they're like, he's not going to go do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just. Yeah. Even though you know, he does have ties to the Haslam. Um, so. I mean, yeah. But, no, I agree with you. I don't. Yeah, I just, you know, I, you know, I think that there could be a scenario, I guess, you know, in this playoff run if for some reason Brock goes down and they don't trust him and I don't know. I, I, you know, he may and he's healthy. He may be able to get back out there, you know. In a, you know, a weird, quirky circumstance, but I would think he'd be done. I mean, I just, uh, it's so hard. It, it's, you know, I can't put myself in the brain of somebody in that situation where yeah. you're told, you know, I, I feel like he's probably going to go out kicking and screaming and want to try every single possible mm-hmm. avenue that he could, mm-hmm. you know, or maybe he may come to the realization this off season, like, you know what, okay, you know, yeah. I, I would hope that looking at kind of Brett Favre and, you know, looking at the guys that came before him and, and kind of what happened, mm-hmm. you know, looking at, if you even look way, you know, way farther back with, you know, Joe Montana, you know, no one wants to see him out there mm-hmm. struggling with, with a third team for no, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah. you know, the only reason it would really be is to chase the last couple records, but the truth of the matter is Brady's going to, Brady's going to get those records anyway, you know, yeah. the, the few, the few that are left. You know, Brady's going to take him. So he really, yeah, he, he should just kind of go. And I don't know. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I started the Peyton Manning to Tennessee as the athletic director of rumor. Um, <laughs> it, it's fun to talk about, you know, there, there, there was a report out there that he might, listen, my understanding of the situation, my reading of the tea leaves is that Peyton and, you know, the Titans court, courted him hard when he left the cold. My understanding of the situation is that he's never really felt like that was where he belonged, you know. And I I said he didn't think that the Titans were good for his brand on Twitter. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but I don't see that happening. I do think, though, that, you know, he will not leave sports. What do you think he might do? I mean, you know, he can't. The thing about it is, he can do anything he wants to do. You know, um, I think, I, yeah, I don't think he'll be able to leave the realm of football. I think it'll either be, you know, whether he does, you know, he, whether he jumps into the broadcast booth or whether he goes, you know, via, like you said, an AD or a coaching standpoint. I think he just loves the actual game so much. I don't see him like just retiring. 
I don't see him going and just doing real estate or something like that. I think he definitely is going to stay with the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know what his aspirations are. I think it's interesting, but I think he could probably do whatever he wanted. I think any network would take him, you know, immediately. I mean, his, mm-hmm. you know, his, his mind and, and the way he could analyze, you know, what's going on out there. Um, I think any, like I said, I think any network would take him. And I think, you know, him returning, I, think, I mean, I think he'll definitely not live here, that's for sure. I think he'll mm-hmm. definitely end, end up back in the South, whether it's, you know, New Orleans or Tennessee or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I, I I definitely don't see him, you know, staying here in Denver. Or I guess he could end up in Indianapolis. I don't know where he, you know, really wants to kind of make his home. But, uh, yeah, I think, like you said, I think he definitely will not be able to leave, you know, the game. I think it'll, you know. I'm very curious to see what um... – what lies what, what the future holds for Peyton Manning? I think that um, there there are but there's so many great things that he could do, and um, it would I think help e- you know, perhaps ease the pain of of how bad this you know this year has been for him at, you know on the football field and off to you know to, to really find that niche where know where he would belong and to do something that um that really suits you know i agree he's so smart and you know you have to to believe that there's some you know incredible future out there for him obviously he's got some young kids and he probably i don't think he'll go into coaching because i do think he wants to spend time with his children um, right so uh, yeah they are young in fact one of the one of the cute things last night his little son was out on the field yeah. before the game and everyone was like tweet you know all the local people were tweeting out mm-hmm. pictures and it's so cute yeah yeah got some young young twins so yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to ask you about Miko Grimes. That was um, kind of a, a topic of, of discussion on social media this week, and we we talk a lot on this show about women and how women are perce- perceived and and all that. Miko Grimes is obviously the wife of, of, of Miami Dolphins cornerback Brent Grimes. He she is a woman who definitely keeps it real on, on social media. Um, the, the, her birthday case for, for for her husband was sort of infamous. Um, she's been very critical of some of the the media members who cover the Dolphins and you know uh, of of the Dolphins as an organization and as a team. And had some interesting thoughts on on Ryan Tannehill. It, you know, it's it, it's well. Let me ask you, what did you make of all of that? You know, as I've told you before when we've kind of talked about people ranting and, and social media, I mean, I feel like, she, you know, she can say whatever the hell she wants to say. You know, yeah. I I mean, in this age, in, in you know, in 2015 and the way it is, I mean, that's what it's for, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think she's, and in the past she's proven, she she knows the game. I mean, she's knowledgeable. It's not yeah, like she's she does. This, Mm-hmm. She's not this, like, random side mouthpiece that's like, yeah, my husband, you know. I mean, she knows. She knows plays. She knows about the game of football. And, you know, she's entitled to her opinion, you know. Mm-hmm. And she, she's observing what she's observing. And, you know, I, I'm down with it, I, you know. I, I don't I'm really down with it, talk. too. I'm so down with it. I, I am, you know. It's, I, I think, first of all, um, I truly do admire women who, who go against the mold you know, who yep. aren't afraid to speak their mind, who aren't afraid to keep it real. Oh, I promised you guys, I'd almost forgotten this. I promised you guys to tell, to tell my story about um, uh, I, you know, the, one of the things that she's been not for was getting arrest, getting in a fight and getting arrested outside the, the stadium before one of the games. I don't remember which game it was, but, but it was a thing that happened. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Um, I got when I started talking about this on social media. I guess it was just yesterday. Uh, of course, we're, record, we're recording this on Tuesday. This is going to be played on Wednesday. So, just for reference, this would have been on Monday. And one of the things I had, you know, people all in their their underoos about. Oh, she got in a fight and got arrested. And I understand. Okay, you know, probably not something that you want mama to, to see and hear about. But, you know, listen, it happens. And I, here is my story. I very agree. I might talk about this in more detail. Um, but I don't want to keep Jennifer too long. So back in my younger days, um, I 
the very first quote unquote serious boyfriend that I had had been in a relationship with another uh, girl, a long term relationship, and we um, they broke up. They had a very um, fairly you know, volatile relationship, and they broke up. And then we dated for um, sure, Lord, most of my high school years and um and she went on to date someone else and so um then we broke up and I went to college and I had come back and had gone out a few times with the guy that she gets this is a small town this is a small town and so the guy that she had dated after they broke up they had broken up and I went out with him a couple of times and um, but they then they got back together, and so there was this party, and we all ran around in the same circles in the same group, and everybody was like, you should, and I was like, nah, you know, I mean, I don't want to, I, you know, here I am, I was from college, I don't want to cause any, you know, and I'm just, I'm not, I've never been in, into drama, so anyway, I get talked into it. And I and, and 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 this chick is much taller than me. I'm like five four. Um, and at the time, I guess I probably weighed about 100 pounds soaking wet. And um, But I was in really good shape because I was still playing softball. And I, at that time, I was running a, a fitness center and really working out and teaching aerobics and doing all kinds of stuff. And so, and the guy had always been athletic. So, you know, I wasn't um, uh, going to be a, a, a cream puff to take on. But anyway... She was def. I was definitely the smaller. I was the 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 punk in the group, the small punk in in the situation. So I walk into this party, and um, it it was a raucous party. There were there was booze and drinking and and, and all of that. And I probably hadn't been there ten fifteen minutes. You know, and I'm I had not seen there were people there I hadn't seen in a while. And out of the corner of my eye, I see something. And about that time, a fist connects with the side of my face. And this chick just jumps me, right? Oh and God. I mean, you know, and I'm like, and of course I'm surprised for one. And because, I mean, you know, I didn't expect my presence there to be um, greeted with hugs and kisses and, you know, flower petals being thrown over me. But that was a surprise. But you know, as as it turns out, you know, survival mechanisms kick kick in, and um, you know, I also had the, I, I suppose, the the fortune to have a, a younger brother that I fought with regularly growing up. So you know, listen, I could you know I could kind of take care of myself. Well, as it turns out, um, I did um, you know kick into survival mode and. When they finally um, broke it, and this was not a girl, this was uh, this was not you know slapping and and by, I mean this was legitimate punches being thrown. And when they finally broke it, uh, I was on top of her, and um, I, she may have started it, but I definitely finished it. So you know, I mean, stuff happens. You know, that would not have been a situation that I ha- would have wanted to get in. But you know what? If someone's going to sucker punch you and jump you, I suppose you know a human instinct does does kick in. And I, I find I don't really tell that. I don't think I've ever told that story to the very many people because it's not necessarily oh hey I got in a fight. You know something that I'm proud of. But you know stuff does happen. And did you? Let me ask you. Did you? Uh, did you do damage? I mean, did she have oh, to yeah. go? No, oh nobody, nobody had to get, we didn't have to go to the hospital or anything, but um, I did actually have, I mean, I had some bruises. I had a scratch on the side of my neck where um, her, she had long finger. I didn't have long fingernails because my fingernails are crappy anyway. Uh, she had a black eye and a bloody nose. and That is crazy. I have never, uh, yeah, I can't say that I've ever been in any kind of situation even similar. I don't even, I mean, I assume, like you said, I assume survival mode would kick in and I would be able to hold my own, but I don't know. I mean, I grew up with a sister. Like, I've never been in any kind of physical altercation with any other human being in my life, so I have no idea. I don't know how my body would respond, and I don't know, you know, but that's, um, 
That's crazy. I mean, I've seen them in high school, you know. I've, I've definitely yeah. been there, but I, I've never been the one, which is, you know. Well, that was not ever something that I, you know, you don't, as a little girl, grow up thinking, well, you know, I want to get in fights with others. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, I guess some, 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 good, <laughs> some girls may, but not the majority. Yeah. You know, the funny part about it, though, is that, and, and we we left fairly, you know, of course, we left fairly soon after that, and everybody was like, girl, you know, <laughs> if I kept telling them and saying, you know, I don't think I should go, and of course, everybody felt bad that they talked me into going, thinking that it would be totally cool. Right. And so, anyway, you know, stuff happens, and but I think that the funny part about it is that, um, when you know situations like that get revealed, we're we're so schooled to be quote unquote ladylike, right? And, right. And act like a lady. Well, you know what? We're human. We're we're just as human as you. And it and I, I kind of admire the fact that that she does not, um, she does not let society define her, and, and and so that's something that I that I admire, and you know, um, I hope she continues to keep it real. Yeah, no, I agree with that, and I think also, you know, like I said before, I think the fact that she has the knowledge to back it up. I mean, she's not just, it's not like, and not that I'm saying that Giselle, you know, doesn't know her stuff, but like when no. she was out there. You know, uh-huh. it's not like just, you know, the random, like, oh, I'm his wife, and, you know, he he deserves to, the, you know. She's legitimately looking at plays and looking at what's going on, and, and, and she's, you know, she's saying how she feels, and I, I can totally yeah. get behind that. Yeah, and I think one of the other things that bothered me is that people were saying Brent Grimes should lose his job or wouldn't lose his job because of what, you know, what, what she was saying, which I completely and absolutely disagree with. And shame on the Dolphins for things for even, and she disputes, by the way, <clears throat> excuse me, she disputes um, that they had repeated conversations with Brent or with her about her social media activity. She said that there was one conversation, it was very brief, and that's it. Um, but I found it offensive that the Dolphins would even do that, um, given their situation and all the issues that they have, they've got far bigger things to worry about in their own locker room and within their own organization than what Miko Grimes is putting out on her social media account. For uh, sure. And you know what? People and you know, you know, people are talking about the Dolphins, so, you know, as we all say, you know, all, all press is good press, so it, I don't think it's a bad thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, considering, like you said, all the other crap that's going on in that locker room and they're, you know, with, with the coaching staff and all of that, it's like that's, yeah. That should be a non-issue. Yeah, pretty funny. Jennifer, always such a pleasure. I kept you too long. I'm so sorry. Um, no, tell, everybody, so- tell everybody where they can find you out there. Um, you can find me um, on Twitter at the Monday Mommy, and uh, I've got some some new stuff coming. Like I said, I've been writing for uh, former Tennessee Titan Bo Gates. His site yeah. is called Fresh Ed Life, so I've been doing some writing for him. And um, yeah, that's where I am for now. We were talking about Bo Scape on Twitter yesterday. I was talking about the Titans 2008 season, which um, is so eerily similar to what the Panthers are going through that it's kind of uh, funny. Yeah, and he was on that team. So great, great stuff. Thanks again. Have a wonderful, wonderful New Year's, and I can't you wait too. to talk to you after the first of the year. Sounds good. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.